The aftermath of a holiday is always something that I wonder how it hits people. There's always some sort of a letdown because we build up so strong, you know, to Christmas and Easter. And I think that in some ways it's probably good for us to, to, uh, to focus heavy on, on, a, on a biblical truth. But I also think it could be detrimental to the life of the, of the Christian that lives holiday to holiday. What you need to do is live in light of the cross every day. And on Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, we looked at Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. We looked at the idea of Christ, the risen, ruling Savior. Christ, the risen, ruling Savior. That Christ is the risen and ruling Savior over all. And we saw four holy declarations about Jesus Christ. First, we saw that Jesus Christ was raised powerfully from the dead. From, the de from dead to life, death to life, and that God's power was displayed very, very boldly, very clearly. Paul has to use four different words for power, and even that doesn't do it full justice. The Father raised the Son from the dead. Second bold declaration about Jesus, that Jesus Christ is seated sovereignly above all. We see that in verses 20 and 21, that at the Father's right hand in heaven, far above all, and it's every term, every identifiable entity is listed, every, every age. It's an unfixed, it's an unchanged fixed position of Christ. So uh, first, Jesus Christ was raised powerfully from the dead to life. And then secondly, Jesus Christ is seated sovereignly above all. Third bold declaration of Jesus is that Jesus Christ is ruling over all. So he's seated, but he's also ruling over all. He is sovereign over all things. He is the Savior of all who believe. Uh, the Father put all things under Christ's feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which leads to the fourth bold declaration about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of his church. Jesus Christ is leading his church. The church is his body. Uh, the church is the fullness of Christ because Christ fills every believer and fills uh, the body of Christ. Uh, we are the, fil the fullness of him who fills all in all. Wow, what a, what a sentence. The church is the fullness of him who fills all in all. We are body parts in Christ's body. He is the head. Everything flows from the head. Uh, the body can do nothing without the head. And the implications here are, are staggering. They're life-changing. They're staggering. The implications are, so Jesus was born to die and reign and rule over all things. Therefore, everything, everyone must bow and yield and surrender to his rule and that everything will someday be in its rightful place under Christ. We do not yet see all things under his, under his feet. Uh, he is ruling over all things, but God in his forbearance as he is bringing in the fullness of the Gentiles and the fullness of Israel. Uh, before the final day, uh, he is forbearing uh, greatly so that People would, would believe and repent. Um, the questions are also staggering. They're mind-boggling. If you're listening to this, I have really three questions for you. Number one, have you bowed and yielded and surrendered and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ apart from anything you could do or earn or deserve? Has your soul found rest in Christ, crucified for our sins, uh, died in our place, shed his blood as our substitute, and he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day, and he is coming back with blessing for those who believe and judgment for those who resist him and, 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 uh, and just say no to Christ. So uh, have you yielded yourself to Jesus Christ? If so, you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, and at least to the second two questions, believer, are you currently praising and serving Christ by acknowledging his right to rule in your life? Or are you being a, you know, a, a lukewarmer? Are you basically saying, you know what, I can do whatever I want because I have fire insurance. That's not the Christian life. That is not the Christian life. Christian life is Christ takes us from start to finish, and while we may waver and wander, we don't do it purposefully, and we live a life of repentance, and we live a life of faith, and we live a life of obedience. So believer, are you currently praising and serving Christ by acknowledging his right to rule in your life as Lord? And then the last question, believer, are you anchored in the church? You can't do the Lone Ranger Christianity. You can't do the, oh, it's just me and Jesus, uh, uh, you know, lie. No, you need to be a part of a local church. When the body of Christ is, is 
is named and described in the New Testament. It is always referring to local assemblies. That's where you do the one another's. That's where you, your soul is cared for by a loving and faithful group of, of, of elders who preach the word and administer the ordinances and, and, uh, and apply church discipline, uh, church good stuff, where you encourage people to grow in faith and do what Christians do. So that's it right there. Christ, the risen and ruling Savior. I hope you know him. I hope you're following him closely, and I hope you're in his church.